What is going on guys, Willis Gaming here, we are back again with another Destiny 2 video. So in this video guys, we're going to be talking a bit about the Prestige Raid Mode, which basically drops tomorrow at 6pm UK time or 10am Pacific time, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, in this video, like I said, I just want to show you guys my setup, which I'll be using, um, a bunch of stuff which could be in the Hard Mode Raid, maybe some strategies and stuff like that, some tactics you need to use. Maybe there's even going to be some new bosses. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Your support is highly much appreciated. And if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing as I post daily Destiny videos. So, what can we expect? What rumors have been flying about for the Prestige Hard Mode? So, first we do that, I just want to look back at the original raids, which Bungie revamped towards the end of Destiny 1. Obviously, Vault of Glass was the first raid to drop in Destiny 1, a highly anticipated event that went on to not only have a world first record, but faster and faster speedrun records after it. The difference between the normal and hard was pretty much just more adds, um, more shielded enemies, the inability to revive teammates when they died, unless of course you were a self-reviving warlock. Even the 390 light level, now known as power level challenges that Bungie set forth were easily conquered on the Templar and Atheon, still with the inability to revive teammates. So let's take a look at another raid from Destiny 1 and what they did and added stuff in the hard mode. So obviously Crota's End was the second raid to drop for the Dark Below DLC, which to some felt more like an elongated strike than an actual raid, which to this day still statistically holds the most amount of glitches and server lag issues. Good old Crota's end. Between normal and hard, it was just like the Vault of Glass, just basically more adds and more shields with no teammate revives on the hard version. The 390 version changes were also made on normal and hard versions in an attempt to make it more fun across the board, but it was a little bit too late. The bridge and the new sword bearer challenges were pretty much no sweat for the veteran raiders. They did try and change it up, but it was just way too easy than the original bridge counter. So the next raid on the list, the King's Fall Raid. This was the first raid which we saw a change in raid mechanics, which involved from just shooting enemies to mini boss prompts as seen on the War Priest, Golgroth and the Sisters. For those that don't remember or never did the raid at all, the King's Fall raid was the first Destiny raid that required team communication unlike the two before. At least it did in the beginning with the designated duties in order to advance the raid. The difference between normal and hard mode on the King's Fall raid was there was actually some additional raid mechanics such as the War Priest gaining projectiles with different behaviors and higher damage, and Oryx having light eaten knights that would eat the bombs needed to kill Oryx. Now the 390 challenge mode for Oryx, which was the detonation of the 16 bombs at the same time, actually became the standard across the board for quite a few season raiders, while the challenges for War Priest and Golgoroth were pretty much just laughable. So let's move on to another raid, the Wrath of the Machine. Bungie showed us that they were continuing with his path for communication required for raiding, placing teamwork on the same level of necessity as damage per person. Normal and hard mode added only a few things like lowered doors, Voxus, a spider tank at the Zamboni, and turrets at Axis. But again, it wasn't really that much of a difference. When the hard mode dropped, it was kind of just like, oh, that's kind of annoying, but it wasn't really a challenge. The thing that makes the hard mode raids difficult is the higher level enemies and higher shields. Everything just takes longer to kill. So let's go to the Leviathan raid now. So if you don't know already, so the Leviathan raid each week, it rotates between the pleasure gardens, gauntlets, and the royal pools. It's like in a non-lateral matter. But yeah, this is hardly a speed bump in it for those every week. Other than Kallus, the Leviathan raid is geared towards teamwork and communication rather than DPS. Which is understandable because then you don't really need the best gear to do the raid. You just need a good team with communication, which I can kind of see what they're doing, catering to the casual player, all that stuff. So what can we expect in the prestige version of the Leviathan raid or the hard mode? Whatever you want to call it, prestige is the new word for hard mode in Destiny now. So that's what we're going to call it. So revives are pretty much already limited with one per person, with basically raiding teams able to complete the raid without full wipes in less than an hour. 
Maybe there will be Nightfall style modifiers. What if there's no radar? What if Bungie continues the trend of no revives at all? Where if one person dies, that's it, it's a wipe. There's so much speculation and yet there's no hints at all. If we can count on Bungie's new direction for raids, we can expect a new mechanic in each room. Although it remains to be seen how much harder it will make the whole thing. Also, what if your loadout is locked, like going into trials, and you can't switch your weapons for the whole raid? This will be a massive game changer, and it will definitely change up the mechanics of the whole raid. Having to use the cold heart through the entire raid just for Kallus will be an absolute pain. So how do you prepare to run? So I want to show you guys the loadout which I will be running, and then hopefully if it uh, helps you guys out, you guys can run this loadout too. So if it is a locked loadout, this is the loadout I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a better Devil's Hand Cannon. I'm going to use the Manamanam Scout Rifle. And I'm also going to use the Wardcliffe Coil. This is the setup I will use if the loadouts are locked. Um, the Better Devils has insane damage close range. The Manamanan has great damage long range with explosive shot. The Wardcliffe Coil is basically good in all scenarios for bursting down targets really, really quick. This will be good for using on pools and dogs at the same time. I know you're probably saying, well, let's just use Merciless, but if you were to use Merciless, you would have to use it for the whole raid. And honestly, I don't think that would be good if it is locked loadout. Now, let me show you the loadout I will use for basically the, each encounter. So for the Pleasure Gardens, uh, which is the dogs, I'll probably be using the Better Devil's Hand Cannon. I'll be using the Manamanam SR4, and I'll probably be using the Sins of the Past Rocket Launcher. Why? Because this Rocket Launcher can one-shot the dogs, and it's insane. This with a pulse grenade, the dog is dead pretty much. For the gauntlet, I'm probably going to run this setup here like I was doing before. Um, all you need for the gauntlet is a good long range weapon for shooting the buttons and a burst weapon I guess for killing the big cabal that comes out. For the royal pools, honestly it's personal preference. Most people will run a merciless, but because my job is to roam on pools, I like to use the sins of the past, the manamanam and the better devils. I mean you can use what you want, it's up to you, but that's what I'll be running. So for Kallus, I'll probably be using the ghost primus auto rifle, cold heart tracer rifle and the sins of the past. This is a really good DPS or rifle for Kallus. Uh, cold heart is because I do skulls and sins of the past is really good for that huge boost damage with the titan barrier. So guys I want to ask you guys some questions. What do you think the prestige raid mode will bring us? How do you think world's first is going to go down? Because as you know the glitches are still working and you are able to still glitch uh, some of the enemies to not spawn so unfortunately that does suck but Bungie has stated that they will be able to detect this if it interferes with world first so that's pretty good and the third question is how many bugs and glitches should we expect how many new ones will pop up that will be uh, very very interesting but I hope you guys enjoyed the video drop a like if you did subscribe to the channel if you're new thank you for watching the video this far if you did and I will see you guys in my next video this has been Willis Gaming and peace <laughs>